Oh my god, it's a lobby scene. This is one of the best shootouts of all time. A mysterious looking man gets through airport security <laughs> with, with ease there. I've been wearing shorts and flip flops and have been treated with more. <laughs> I'm Wait. struck by what he's wearing though. What do you mean what he's wearing? These guys are dressed sick. He is dressed like a secondary school goth. <laughs> Hi, I'm Luke, and The Matrix is my favourite movie of all time. Hi, I'm Alex, and I've never actually seen The Matrix. That is mental. I can't oh. believe you've never seen it. Well, it's not possible to see every single film there's ever been, is it? Of course not, but you start with the best films that are ever made. Yeah, which is Toy Story 1. <laughs> all right, let's get going. Let's go. Um, how old were you when The Matrix came out? When was it released? Uh, 99. 99. Eight? Eight. I mean, any parent is letting their eight-year-old watch this film. Mine didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready, mate? Born ready, mate. Like they say in the Matrix, plug in. So what you're seeing here is just code. This isn't a film, it's just the intro. That looks like the very start of a very early computer when you log in for the first time. Oh, mate, yeah, do you remember those? I remember the first computer I had, it was just black screen and letters, and I'd spend hours doing, like, space, 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 underscore, underscore, space, 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 new paragraph, and, like, drawing, like, a smiley face. Yeah. Because there was fuck all else, else to do it's with it. It's immediately aged in that sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. Computer technology has come on so much that... Yeah, like, that's fair. The very first Apple computers, which I used in school as well... Yeah. ...have just seemed like they were centuries old. Here's what I love. 555, five, five. all American films, phone numbers start with 555. Five, five. Not a real uh, phone code. Really? Yeah, doesn't exist. It's not real. Or it does. It's plus one, isn't it? Plus one, and then, but you have like 555, five, five, like New York is like 646 or something like that. 353, right. three. they all, but 555 five, five is just created for films. All right, we're in now. That's something I didn't know anyway. No, there you go. It might not actually be true. We better research that actually before we put that out. Yeah, it's true, there we go. Welcome to the film show. Over <laughs> <laughs> to the American phone show. Yeah. All right, look, well, we're starting it. It's dark. Don't don't forget that this film is gonna be dark a lot. Um, Looks like a load of coppers planning raid on some little flat or something. You would be absolutely correct in saying so. And there is someone there. You swear I'd seen the Matrix. So this blew my mind when I was a kid because when I was growing up as a kid, I know it sounds ridiculous, but you didn't have like. Um, Superhero action filled heroines, like not like proper badass female leads. I suppose Lara Croft was the closest thing. Yeah, but then, but Lara Croft is like this sexy thing and like hot pants and stuff. Oh, like, like, fucking hell. Yeah. Jesus. Well, this I'm is not. Out to kids. <laughs> just, just, Jesus. No, all kids should watch this. This should be part of a school syllabus. Yeah, I know what you mean. It, she's, she's not deliberately. She isn't. No, she is just. Yeah, exactly. Body. She is like, um, and like, uh, is it what I think it's androgynist? Is androgynous, that, yeah. Is that androgynous? Is that, non, is that non-female, female? Androgynous. She adopts yeah. both. Yeah. She, she, maybe you could say that she exists in a not a male or female voice. Yeah, yeah. In the same way that this film's about yeah. not existing. Okay, in. cool, that's a good show, yeah. yeah. So, what, so what you didn't have when we were younger is like, you only had like sexy female characters, like who are the leads, not like Trinity, who doesn't really... She doesn't really exist as a male or female character. She's like androgynous, so, and she's like within this void, which is obviously what you see in the Matrix as well. Yeah. Layers, guys, deep. <laughs> Did you just see her running across the wall, mate? This, this is. Yeah. This stuff never happened. This stuff never happened until the Matrix. Oh, that leg kick. What do you think? Really, really good fight scene. Yeah. Like absolutely epic action. Yeah. Can't see a lot of it. Yeah, you know it's it is very dark and dimly lit, but that's kind of like what you'd expect if, say, the police planned a raid on, say, a terror suspect, for instance. Yep. In the middle of the night. Yeah. That's what it's going to be like, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, they are effectively terrorists it's, at this point. It's authentic. So they're enemies of the state, aren't they? Essentially. Yeah, that is it. Yeah. Well, you're getting it already. See, it's pretty self-explanatory. This film. Fucking hell, that's pretty cool. Yeah. She's faster than Usain Bolt. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. She should try out for the NFL with yeah, the, yeah, mate, with that. With a lead like that. <laughs> with a long jump like that, actually. Boom. Yeah, that is seriously impressive stuff. Yeah, mate. Told you, mate. It's an absolute banging film.
So you've got the Wachowskis, who are obviously progressive uh, in their views. And, yeah, I think, like, the whole film is pretty representative of that. It's like there's a force between keeping, keeping your head in the sand and hiding to what is really going out there and opening your eyes and being at the forefront of a revolution, which is another amazing thing about this film. They use Kung Fu as the transportation vehicle to be able to communicate what is actually a pretty deep message. You take the blue pill, the story ends, you wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Is this not some sweet shit, I think? <laughs> the red pill and the blue pill. Yeah. <laughs> this is like the turning point of the film now. This is where, because we're, ar like, we're, as we're asking ourselves the question, what is the Matrix? What is the Matrix? What are you doing? And this is it. This is where shit goes down. I know the red pill is used to stand for sort of like left-wing politics and socialism and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is, uh, it's pretty much like that, isn't it? It's like, here's the red pill, here's your eye-opener, here's how you want to see the world in a different way, or here's the blue pill, here's how you're told to look at the world, how they want you to see it. Um, so red pill could just stand for sort of challenging the status quo then. Yeah. And Blue Pill is accepting it, basically. It, it's pretty and much, yeah, that's it. If Red Pill is escaping the reality, it's escaping the status quo. Yeah. So it's, you can, even though it's a complicated film then, yeah. that makes clear sense of you're escaping and fighting off the status quo, so it's like a rebellious yeah. film in that sense. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that's pretty no, clear, yes. I suppose, when you put it like that. Yeah. What would you take, the Red Pill or the Blue Pill? I think the fashionable answer, the answer that everyone would want to see is the Red Pill. Yeah. to rebel, but really 95% of us would take the blue pill because yeah. it's, the safer, it's the safer personal option. I say exactly, yeah. It's, it's like... It's easier, life's easier as well, isn't it? It's just do as yeah. you're told. Life goes much easier. Mm. Here is where the whole game changes. Obviously, you've seen... That, um, that everyone is told you must run from an agent. Trinity's out there, quick time. <laughs> However, he stays. This is the best line in the whole film. He's, He's starting to believe. To believe. So that guy's dressed like he works on the doors of Idols in Swansea. <laughs> Um, not tonight, mate. You've had too much alternate reality. <laughs> is that what it is? It's, he's beginning to believe. When you say he's beginning to believe, it's not clear what. I think it's... I mean, yes, we've, just, we've been watching this film for two hours. It's very clear what he's beginning to believe. He's beginning to believe that he is living, or has been living, in a simulated reality. And this, that he is the one. Oh. Bullet time. Here's another thing about this film. There were no films with this type of CGI as well. Like, this was completely revolutionary in how films were made. It's like, mind-blowing. The manipulation of that camera angle is unreal. Quality. I think they used... I think I remember seeing the... Doc I used to have, like, the DVD pack, so it was, like, the Bullet Time documentary in the back. And it was, like... You really were a super fan, weren't you? I mean, I, uh, <laughs> I used to wear leather a lot. Yeah, and... Uh, that, mate. <laughs> I think they had, like, 100 cameras just all around to be able to, like, capture... Like that kind of pause hold thing. Oh, look at this. Would you please remove any metallic oh okay. my God, it's a lobby scene. This is one of the best shootouts of all time. A mysterious looking man gets through airport security <laughs> with, with ease there. I've been wearing shorts and flip flops and have been treated with more suspicion. <laughs> I'm Wait. struck by what he's wearing though. What do you mean what he's wearing? These guys are dressed sick. He is dressed like a secondary school goth. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing he's missing, the only thing he's missing is fingerless gloves. Yeah. A can of insert name of very popular energy drink. <laughs> and like slipknot on his iPod or something. All hard all very, very hardcore and all representative of absolute badasses. In fact, he looks quite similar to a goth I was in school where he used to go around beating kids up. Yeah? Yeah. Badass. Which, you know, <laughs> he may have been influenced by, yeah, by the Matrix. Yeah, by the Matrix, yeah. Films yeah. like Inception have been influenced by this. 
you know, a whole That's... new era of action films, but also goths beating each other up. That's fair. Yeah, that, that, and that is what, I suppose, what art is, isn't it? It's, it's um... High and low, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You can you can take it like you can take from what you want. I watched this film and I and I started to question my own sense of reality. Daryl the Goff watched this film and he realised that wearing leather and kicking people in the face is the way forward in life. Yeah, I, this is going to sound really weird, but I kind of like the the colours. Is that yeah, really the, strange? And that the fact like yeah. they're they're fighting in this like weird off green. Well, it's representative of code. This what's this one's, yeah. there's layers to this film, guys. There are yeah. layers to this film. This is what so uh, so what they see in the real world is just code because this is just this is just a, a software program. So it is representative of that the black screen and green numbers, and that, that's what you that see. That makes me think then that whether this is a film criticizing the role of state surveillance and the state's manipulation of tech. Yeah, like the internet, your phone, yeah, um, CCTV, and right. your use of the internet. It's all control. It's always said that encrypted software, like WhatsApp chats and stuff like that. Yeah, even though they're meant to be encrypted, the security services still possess technology that we oh, don't yeah. know about that they could use to infiltrate. Um, you know, terrorists talking on chat rooms yeah. and and instant messaging chats. Right? Yeah. But then, obviously, this film is what, like, 20, <laughs> yeah, years, 20 years, years old? Yeah, 20 years old, yeah. So, to have foreseen yeah. the role of um, tech and the internet and its sort of pervasive luck into our lives is, is pretty next-level stuff. That's the Wachowskis, baby. Well, Luke, I've got to ask you, did you have a big trench coat like me? <laughs> I'd, uh, I'd prefer not to answer that on camera, mate. <laughs> mate, that silence speaks volumes. <laughs> You've got to get the photos out and show us all. Mate, there's nothing wrong with long leather, sunglasses, leather boots, black trousers, black gloves and a black undershirt. If anything, it's colourful. One colour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's full yeah. of it. I'll get, back, I'll get back to you on that, mate. <laughs> so I get that this film is more about existing in an alternative universe, alternative reality. Yeah. Luke, if that makes sense. Um, I kind of remember from doing A-levels, that there's a school of thought, I think, in philosophy, solipsism, which suggests that if you can't see something, you call it into question of, of does it exist? Oh, yeah. Kind of thing of, I remember the teacher saying, there's a chair in this room, but if I go outside this room and close the door, how do I know that it exists? And she's like, and it was, well, I've seen it, but he said, well, how reliable is your eyesight? You know, the vast majority of cases in uh, crime, for instance, are solved not by eyewitness accounts, which are famously like unreliable, but things like DNA. So how yeah. reliable is, is your own experience of something? That's mad. I've never heard that. Um, that is not what I got from this film. <laughs> it, 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 it could be, yeah. But I just thought it was going to be a sort of a mad... Uh, a mad action film, really, yeah. where they're just like prancing around. And, like, well, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's so much more than that. And the fact that you've yeah. gone to that deep level is exactly the reason why I loved this film as a kid. It's because a, yeah. I'd never, like, I'd never known this whole idea or ideology of like we are a part of simulation. What's real? What isn't real? What do you believe? What don't you believe? And then this is what opened my eyes to that. And it's like what you say there. You're right. Yeah, like what is real? It, this is opening it, your eyes. So, or, or you, or could you break it back to the like the most fundamental sort of earliest philosophy ever, which was like, how do I know I exist? Yeah. Descartes and, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. How, how do I know right now that I'm not dreaming? What is it? I think I am, therefore I am. I think, like therefore that. I am. I think, like therefore how I am. How do I know that I'm not sat here watching The Matrix with you? Yeah. yeah. And this is just, this isn't real. Yeah. See? There you go. It's not just an action film, is it? It's more than that. It's, it's deep. <laughs> it's deep. It's deeper than that, man. It's deep. Now, let's, um, let's watch some Kung Fu. Um, <laughs> All right, mate. So that's the Matrix. What do you think? Like you said, absolute layers. Yep. Really enjoyed it. There's so many different elements that you can explore, whether it's enemies of the state being pursued or whether it's about existing in an alternate reality. Or yep. 
whether you just like the forefront of action in films being yeah. uh, being explored, basically, yeah. in terms of nothing had ever been done camera angle wise yeah. in Hollywood like that before. Yeah. So I can see why it's got such a mass broad appeal. I'd probably recommend it to people, but I think it's, you know, there's certain books that they say you should read a number of different times to get it. Like yeah. Something by James Joyce, like Dubliners or a book like that. Yeah. It should be read three, four times to actually get it and see the different levels. I think that's probably the same with this film. Definitely. I Definitely. Think, I think when you watched it as a kid, you probably just thought, Saw an these action guys film. are cool. <laughs> it's really cool and they, they're beating shit out of each other. But then you get a curiosity of, are they actually, are they actually fighting off the state? And it, but it actually, it, it kind of sparks deep political conversations that you'll have with yourself of, you can't just see this as an anti-government film yeah. because ultimately when he takes that red pill, yeah. his life becomes a complete misery. Yeah. The, the life becomes a complete misery. Yeah. Is, it, is that making the, the assumption that it's up to people to make their own personal decision and there's no sort of overriding narrative of good versus evil on this? Yeah. So do, does this film exist in that sort of void of, well, we're not actually sure what, what message it's going to give? Yeah. I mean, I love how... That's, that's what I'm thinking from this. I love how much you got from it in the first time. Watch it again. See for it yourself. Because yeah. you do, you do it's, it's layered like that. So you do you do see little dis- bits and pieces. But I'm glad you've enjoyed it. So, Luke, I'm led to believe that there are two more Matrix films. Shall I go and rent them? Do not watch the other Matrix <laughs> film. They are god-awful. Watch this one and finish it there. And stick with this. Stick with All this right, one. Okay, fair enough. Nice one.